So Paul Ryan is retiring. He's not going to run for re-election for Congress. This came as a surprise to many people because he, of course, right now is Speaker of the House. And, you know, when somebody who's that high profile with that position of authority um, decides to step down, it's like, whoa, what's going on here? So, you know, he gave the bullshit standard cut and dry response of, I would like to spend some more time with my family. I like families. Do you like families? Just like the fucking uh, boring fucking nonsense answer. That's not really why he's doing it. But I want to go ahead and give you guys um, why I think he's doing it. I think there are five reasons why he's doing it. And to one extent or another, all these factored in, whether subconsciously or consciously. But the first one is, yes, he fears a giant Republican bloodbath coming in the next election, or actually next few election cycles. So he wants off the sinking ship. And he doesn't want to be blamed in part for it. And he doesn't want to be viewed as part of the problem. So you hop off now, you get off the sinking ship, and then you can turn around in the future and go, Oh, the Republican blood wasn't me! They weren't upset with me! I wasn't one of the ones who's culpable for it, whose ideology is deeply unpopular and all that. No, I, my hands are clean of this. It was really just Trump and Trumpism. And he's given himself enough plausible deniability uh, with Trump, where he's going to make that argument. He's going, I didn't rubber stamp everything he wanted. I wasn't somebody who signed off and said he's always right. So no, you're wrong to say I'm unpopular like they were unpopular. I was gone by the time the bloodbath happened. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, Randy Bryce is his opponent. And Randy Bryce is a monster. And he's likely to win. Because he's running a, a much, a, a very populist campaign. So uh, he's a justice Democrat taking no corporate PAC money. He's big on hammering away on workers' rights and unions. And this is something, this appeals to everybody. This appeals to everybody. That That's even a message that, you know, the idiot corporate Democrats think like, oh, we need to be more moderate and centrist and reach out to the right in order to get Republican voters. It's actually not true. You know how you could chip away some Republican voters? By being populist. Because, you know... Nobody wants to get hosed by corporate donors, Democrat or Republican, average Joes. They don't want to get, have a, a system that's an oligarchy. So you get an actual lefty coming along saying, I'm going to fight for everybody in terms of workers' rights, health care. And that's how you get, you hold your base and you get some Republican crossover voters. So Randy Bryce, I think Paul Ryan knows he's in trouble. And Randy Bryce has a really good chance of winning. And he doesn't want to get embarrassed in the same way that Eric Cantor got embarrassed. Eric Cantor, one of the top Republican officials, got ousted by David Bratt, who ran, you know, a more populist campaign. So he doesn't want to be in that situation. The third reason is he can already fly the mission accomplished banner. He did what he set out to do. He is, you know, an Ayn Rand-ish type guy, libertarian-ish type guy, although I do think that's almost unfair to libertarians because Paul Ryan's much more pro-war than libertarians, and Paul Ryan's much more in favor of welfare than standard libertarians because he just wants welfare for the rich. As long as it's not welfare for the poor, he's fine with it. Libertarians are at least principled in that they say, we don't want welfare for the poor, but we don't want it for the rich either. So he's just, you know, libertarian-ish leaning. Um, and his main thing was tax cuts for the rich. And that's what he got with the Trump tax bill. Listen, we went over the facts before. I'm sure all of you guys know it at this point. 83% of the benefits of Trump's tax bill, the Republican tax bill, go to the top 1%. So that's all he wanted. He wanted that. He wanted to cut the corporate tax rate. Mission accomplished. That went from 35% to 21%. They also gutted the estate tax. Mission accomplished. So now he gets to turn around all of his corporate donors and go, I'm the man. I did what I said I was going to do. You were looking for that. There you go. I did it. So, um... That's all he really wanted. Now, there, he also wanted to, you know, gut Social Security and Medicare and, and Medicaid. They did that to an extent. They didn't do that as much as he wanted. I mean, he would like to see them fucking privatized. But he might feel like, with the political climate right now, there's no way that's going to happen anyway, so that's why he's getting out of Dodge. Um, and then the fourth reason is, he wants to get paid, son. He wants to get paid in the private sector. When you're a guy like Paul Ryan, and you take just fucking mountains of cash from corporate donors, from Wall Street, from the financial sector, they understand the way this game works. So they pay you, you do their bidding, and then part and parcel of this is once you get out of there, 
come to me and, and Papa's going to get you a job. And that's what's going to happen. He's going to get some sort of a job, whether it's a lobbyist or lobbyist under another name to avert ethics issues, ethics laws and rules. And um, he's going to get paid. Paid a hell of a lot more than he was paid uh, in his job as Speaker of the House. So he wants to cash in skis. And then um, the final reason, which is really only a semi-reason because I'm going to keep it real, I'm making it up. Um, he could leave open the potential for a presidential run down the road if he chooses. Because again, if he stays in there for the Republican bloodbath, then, you know, his name gets tarred in a way that's permanently tied to Trumpism and this backlash. And he doesn't want that. He doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to be viewed as the Republicans' Nancy Pelosi. Where the name just, you know, gives a Pavlovian response to anybody who hears it. Like, gross. So now, by the way, to me, I already get that response. Many people listen to this show, you're political junkies, you already get that response. But he wants that plausible deniability where you go away for a while, when people forget about you and then you make a reappearance later, your approval ratings tend to go up. And that's just a, a truism that happens across the board. I mean, it happened with fucking Hillary Clinton. When Hillary Clinton wasn't saying anything, her approval rating shot up. Then when she got out in public and started speaking again, boom, they tanked. Um, so that just happens to everybody. George W. Bush now has a fucking favorability rating. He destroyed the country. There was the Great Recession, the deregulation, the endless wars, all that shit. But you go away and then you come back and they go, oh, the good old days, nostalgia. Nostalgia is a powerful thing. So he wants to go away, you know, maybe have those numbers bounce back. And then if he wants to do a presidential run down the road, but he might not even be interested in that because he wants to be in the private sector and all that stuff. But he leaves open the possibility if he gets out now, if he doesn't get out now, then that's really shitting on those chances because he will be tied permanently to uh, this Republican, uh, anti-Republican backlash. And it's not just him, there's a lot of other pe Republicans who are stepping down now too. So, I think that's what's going on here. But what I need everybody to understand is this. There's a lot of fucking gross, disgusting, you know, rehabilitating of Paul Ryan going on right now in some democratic circles, where they go, Oh! What a shame! Paul Ryan, one of the last reasonable Republicans! Stabbling down! Sad! And by the way, he's staying till the end of his term. So I think it's January he's leaving. He's just not running for re-election, basically. But... That's- that's nonsense. When people try to act like, No, he's not like the other ones! That- it's not true. Because again, my whole thing is, go to the voting record, because that's all that really matters at the end of the day. Go to the voting record. And when you go to the voting record of a lot of these, you know, seemingly, at least somewhat, anti-Trump Republicans, you find out that they vote with him almost all the time. Like Jeff Flake, for example. 90% of the time he votes with Donald Trump. Don't tell me about how you're a fucking resistance hero, and he's welcomed into those hashtag resistance circles, but goofy Democrats who are loyalists to the party and know nothing about policy issues. Um, he's welcomed in those circles, but he votes with Trump 9 out of 10 times. That means all the deregulation, all the tax cuts for the rich, most of the wars, he's like, let's fucking do it! And actually, in some instances, they're even worse than Trump, because they- their- their most vocal opposition is when Trump dares to do one of the few things that's good, like, for example, when he got out of TPP. Guys like Jeff Flake and Paul Ryan are like, no, But we love screwing over working people endlessly! No. So he's not- there, go to the voting record for all of these Republicans, and you'll find very quickly, in Washington, D.C., there are no moderates. There are no moderates. Now, Republican voters, different story. A lot of Republican voters actually have many populist beliefs and agree with the populist left in many respects. So that's a different story. But the Republican, the Republican politicians in Washington, D.C., there are no moderates. So what they like about Paul Ryan, and they're too dumb to realize this is the reason they like him, is that he's not doing mean tweets. He's not doing mean tweets, he doesn't come across as unhinged. He's kind of young looking and he goes to the gym and he talks about marginal tax rates and so therefore he's a wonky and technocratic and serious. But he's not. He's a corporate tool and he sold out workers at every single opportunity and that needs to be pointed out. 